Hello and welcome to the next Laws mini course presented by the Rugby Quebec referees. This time we'll be discussing the lineout and the mall. So to form a lineout, uh, these are the general lines that you have to look at. You could pause this and you'll see uh, an idea. The throwing team gets to decide how many numbers they have. The defensive team has to match or have fewer numbers. The receiver that's two meters away from the lineout is optional, so you don't have to have them. But the person, the player that is matching the throwing in player, um, who is two meters from the mark of touch and two meters from the five meter line, must be there. That is not an optional position. Um, also, one, I guess, uh, myth that a lot of people think around the line out formation is that you just need one person who yells mark um, standing between the five and the 15. That's not actually the case. You need two players from both teams. Um, approaching the mark of touch. So if there's only two players from one team, the other team still has the option of taking a quick throw as long as the ball isn't dead. Chris, can you just explain what makes a ball dead? Yeah, so to allow a quick throw, what we need to see is as soon as the ball goes into touch, um, either the, the first player from the team who is throwing in that receives, that gets the ball, they must throw the ball in without it having touched a spectator, a coach, or any other outside player, or any player from their own team. They also have to throw the ball behind the mark of touch. So if you're in front of the mark of touch, we just have the regular line out. We'll just have a line out again. But if you're, as long as you're behind the mark of touch, you can take the quick throw as long as you're the first player to get the ball. Um, now, the, now, there's lots of rumors that the ball can't hit a structure, it can't hit a fence, it can't hit advertising boards, can't hit trees. The ball can hit whatever it wants as long as it's not a human being. Um, so if it bumps into someone's dog, we can still technically play. Um, you might just want to check to make sure the dog's okay. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so the we've seen a couple of trends creeping into the game. Um, the first is throwing a cross lineup. So if we play this clip, uh, we'll be able to see Yellow here goes straight across the line out and he basically lands in the mall. Um, this collapses the mall and, and the referee correctly penalizes. Um, so we'll see it again. Here we go. Number four goes up and it's straight across the mall. So what we look for um, to be, we consider it liable to sanction is that it's across the mall and it affects the play and it lands on a player. So here's another one. Blue comes across and he makes contact in the air. And again, referee correctly awards the penalty. So the times where you can throw across and I guess we could use the term get away with it is if you steal the ball. So if you throw across and you catch the ball, um, good for you. It's the risk reward. It's kind of like a, a one arm intercept attempt. Um, you know, either you're going 80 meters and scoring a hero try or you're getting a yellow card most likely. Um, so this is the same thing. So if you throw across and you get the ball, it's okay. Or if you throw across and let's say you jumped at the back for some reason and the mall's at the front and there's no one there and you just land in grass, that's kind of, you know, we can play on as long as you then are not offside and affect the play. Oops. Bear with me, please. Um, so now we're going to take a look at uh, mall setups. Um, so we're going to take a look at both a good and a bad mall setup. So here's a good mall setup. What we want to be able to do is, you know, so it's it goes straight to the first player. We see his number the whole time. There's no player standing in front of him. There's no player blocking him. The defense has access if they want, if they want to try to sack. So that would be an immediate tackle. Um, or if they want to just defend the mall, which is the case in these clips. Um, you know, all the players bind properly, and the ball is transferred once the mall is set up. 
So another big thing is if the defense doesn't enter the mall, make sure that as the jumper who has the ball, you keep the ball in your hands. And then you can keep moving forward if you want. And as soon as they touch you, then you can transfer the ball. So we're, now we're gonna take a look at another trend that's creeping into the game. Um, we refer to it as spooning. So this is when one of the lifters lifts the jumper and then comes down in front of them to form the mall. So in this case, you'll see number three. Um, you don't have his number here, but um, you clearly see it in this clip. He turns and he gets himself between the defense and the jumper. So this gives the attack an unfair advantage because it allows them to form a mall without the risk of a sack. So here's another example. And in this situation, it's actually the front lifter who does it. Um, we'll see it up here from number one. Typically it is the back lifter. Uh, so you see how number one has just gone clearly in front of the jumper and there's no way for the defense to access the jumper or have a fair contest to try to sack or to form a proper mall defense. And here we go, have it again from number one. And in this case, it, clearly it's a set piece where they just spin off of the, of the mall. But now the team in gold has no chance to access the ball carrier and they don't know where the ball is. So this is, this is the big thing that we're trying to avoid. And then we don't have clips of this, but the second thing that we would want to avoid in the mall is what we call swimming. So that's when once you're in the mall and you're bound, you can't change your bind unless you're coming straight through the middle. So we call swimming when you go around the side of the mall and you're changing your binds. So this is, again, it's liable for penalty or hopefully the referee is managing it. So once you're bound into a mall, stay bound or get out of the mall. Don't, don't move your binds to try to move yourself up the side of the mall. You can go through the middle, but you can't go through the sides. And that's referring mainly to defensive players yeah. who are trying to access the ball. Exactly. This is defensive players who are going around the mall to get to the ball carrier or disrupt the nine who's passing the ball out. Chris, can you just talk about the sack? You mentioned it briefly. Yeah. So the sack is when the defensive player, they don't want to form a mall. They want to just tackle the ball carrier to prevent the mall from starting. So the only way you're going to be rewarded for a sack is if it happens immediately. That's, that's the key term. It has to be immediate. If you hold on and you go to ground as the defense, but the attack stays on their feet and they form a mall around you, and then you bring it down, it's going to be collapsing the mall. So you have to be very good and very accurate with a sack. Um, and the sack is basically it's a tackle. You're just tackling the player. So if the player ends up having time to have his teammates around him, you you probably haven't succeeded in, in sacking them all. And on the flip side of that, if you do execute that tackle with good timing and with good force and you bring that player to ground immediately and somehow he was able to hand off the ball and the ball goes to down, that's when you'll often hear the referee yell, sack was good or sack completed. Because while there might seem like there was a mall that was collapsed by the defense, they, they did have that immediate opportunity to execute a sack. So thank you for listening. Um, we did not actually receive any questions this month. So please send us um, questions next month because uh, we're always happy to answer um, the public's questions. Thank you. Have a great day.